Ripple CBDC advisor is delighted with Montenegro CBDC pilot as Ripple hosts workshops and engages in meetings for the stablecoin project. By the way, is the U.S. Congressman Stephen Lynch right to have claimed that the SEC won its lawsuit against Ripple? Also, Catalyze Research has recently partnered with Ripple to expand XRP's ledger presence in South Korea. Finally, can XRP rally to $20,000 this year? Stick with me till the end to find out more. If this sounds like something of much interest to you, be sure to check out this new video starting now. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on the 31th of July. Anthony Welfare, CBDC advisor at Ripple, took to Twitter to express delight in working with a dedicated team of experts in Montenegro regarding the National Stablecoin Project. According to the tweet, it is a continuation of activities on implementing the country's central bank digital currency pilot project. The Central Bank of Montenegro website provides further insight into the ongoing efforts to implement the stablecoin project in the country. The report highlights that Ripple sent its experts to Montenegro this week. During their visit, the Ripple representatives conducted two enlightening workshops. The first workshop covered asset tokenization, while the second delved into programmability. These workshops were tailored for attendees from diverse sectors, including financial service facilitators, public and private institutions, and scholars from the academic realm. Through these educational events, participants gained invaluable knowledge about the working principle of blockchain technology and its vast possibilities. Additionally, Ripple's experts engaged in several productive meetings with reps from various groups. These meetings aim to foster idea exchange and identify potential candidates for testing CBDC in Montenegro. Notably, the central point of Montenegro's pilot project is to equip the public with hands-on experience in utilizing the proposed digital currency while being mindful of its risks. The implications on regulations, cybersecurity, and users' rights and privacy were of particular concern. By actively participating in these educational and exploratory activities, Montenegro aligned itself with most banks worldwide. According to a report which the CBCG cited, approximately 93% of all Apex banks have already embarked on CBDC tests. It noted that over half of them have been actively performing real experiments like Montenegro. Meanwhile, Ripple CBDC endeavors transcends the borders of Montenegro. The San Francisco-based payments company rolled out its dedicated CBDC platform in May to allow public and private financial institutions launch their digital currencies. A month before that, Montenegro confirmed Ripple as its official CBDC project partner. Ripple is currently powering digital currency projects for several countries including the Republic of Palau, Colombia, and Bhutan. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. In a video making the rounds, Massachusetts Representative Stephen Lynch claimed that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission won the lawsuit against Ripple. Representative Lynch made this known while dismissing claims that the SEC prefers to regulate the crypto industry using regulation by enforcement tactics. I want to address the claim that the SEC has been exercising regulation by enforcement as if there are no guidelines out there that these crypto firms would be bound by, said Representative Lynch. He debunked these claims by stating that the SEC, under the leadership of Gensler, has filed 131 cases against crypto firms. Representative Lynch said the regulatory agency had won 130 and a half out of the 131 cases, including the Ripple lawsuit. Consequently, the congressman said the SEC is regulating the crypto industry by applying the law, as opposed to claims that the commission prefers the regulation by enforcement approach. Mr. Gensler at the SEC has brought 131 cases and has won 130 and half if you count the Ripple case last week. The SEC is regulating the crypto industry by the application of the law, he added. The video, which has gone viral within the XRP community, stirred reactions from prominent members, including attorney John Deaton. 
Reacting, Attorney Deaton requested permission to testify on behalf of retail crypto holders at one of these congressional hearings regarding SEC enforcement actions. In a tweet on Wednesday, Attorney Deaton disclosed that he represents over 75k XRP holders and more than 4k Coinbase customers. Thus, he is one of the most qualified candidates to speak on behalf of retail crypto holders. After all, shouldn't facts and truth matter during these hearings, Deaton noted. In an attempt to get his request approved, Deaton tagged several members of the United States House Financial Services Committee. Notably, some of the congressman attorney Deaton tagged in the tweet include Committee Chair Patrick McHenry, Warren Davidson, Bill Heisinga, French Hill, Tom Emmer, and Darren Soto. Besides Deaton, other XRP enthusiasts also reacted to Representative Lynch's remark at the recent congressional hearing. Notably, XRP community members expressed disappointment with Representative Lynch for claiming the SEC won the Ripple lawsuit. Some XRP enthusiasts disagreed with Representative Lynch's position that the SEC is regulating through the application of the law. A community member called attention to comments made by Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn in the Ripple case. Judge Netburn had criticized the SEC for litigating for its internal goal and not out of allegiance to the law. Meanwhile, Ripple has clarified that it won the lawsuit, despite the judge's ruling that its past XRP sales to institutional clients constitute securities. As reported, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said the court's ruling was an unequivocal win for the company, as XRP was declared a non-security. Ripple has reiterated that its primary focus in the lawsuit was to ensure XRP is given clarity and the company got its desire. Furthermore, Catalyze Research, a consultancy focused on Web3 and blockchain solutions, took to Twitter to announce a collaboration with Ripple. This partnership aims to bolster the presence of the XRP ledger in the vibrant South Korean market. The Ripple official blog featured the development, highlighting Catalyze Research's reputation as a leading Web3 and blockchain consulting group. Together, Ripple and Catalyze Research seek to tap into the rich potential of South Korea's crypto-based developer community, boosting XRPL. At the heart of this collaboration lies a vision to empower South Korean developers. It will include an XRPL development education agenda targeted at the needs of South Korean software engineers. The local developer community will also be engaged through workshops, meetups, and hackathons. Additionally, strategies will be devised to seamlessly integrate various decentralized finance and NFT-based dApps on the XRP Ledger ecosystem. Marcus Fanger, the vice president of RippleX Growth at Ripple, expressed enthusiasm for the collaboration, acknowledging South Korea's status as a thriving hub for blockchain technology. He emphasized their shared vision to foster growth and adoption, providing South Korean developers with the support to unlock the full potential of XRP Ledger. Ben Ko, CEO of Catalyze Research, echoed a similar sentiment, stating that they aim to accelerate the growth of XRPL in South Korea by promoting innovation and collaboration. The CEO envisions nurturing an atmosphere driving accelerated growth in South Korea, propelling the nation to global leadership in blockchain technology. Notably, the collaboration with Catalyze Research represents one of many endeavors Ripple has undertaken in recent times to foster development and innovation. As was reported, Ripple joined forces in a project to test the issuance of central bank digital currencies and stablecoins. Now to the big question of the day, can XRP rally to $20,000 this year? Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. In the crypto scene, where wild speculations often dominate discussions, Chad Stengrabber, the creative director at Ghost Punch Games, has presented an ambitious case for the possibility of XRP reaching an astounding $20,000 price point. While it is important to note that these are mere speculations and there is no guarantee that such events will occur, his insights offer intriguing food for thought. Stengrabber starts by laying out three fundamental principles that determine the value of an asset. First and foremost, there's the classic economic principle of supply and demand. In the case of XRP, with a limited supply of less than 100 billion coins, scarcity could significantly drive up prices if the demand surges. Secondly, using a real estate analogy, he delves into the market appreciation concept. When assets appreciate in value over time, the overall market value increases, even if the actual money injection remains limited. Lastly, he calls attention to the notion of limited assets, highlighting the value attributed to assets like the Mona Lisa due to their uniqueness and societal importance. 
Transitioning to the specifics of XRP, Stingrabber emphasizes its limited supply and the deflationary mechanism caused by burning small portions of XRP during ledger transactions. He underscores the importance of the circulating supply, which heavily influences the asset's price. At present, XRP's market cap is around $37.7 billion. This value was $18 billion currently. However, this number doesn't represent the actual amount of money invested in XRP. However, it merely reflects the current value people are willing to pay. Stingrabber touches on Ripple's on-demand liquidity service, explaining that it is designed for small banks and money transmitters, not major institutions like Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo. These major players are unlikely to use ODL for their massive global transfers, emphasizing the need for privacy. The creative director contends that banks require privacy for internal ledger transactions, and XRP was never intended for public retail trading. Instead, he speculates that banks will create private XRP ledgers and issue their derivatives, similar to how central banks hold gold as a backing asset. Stingrabber theorizes that XRP could become a reserve currency asset, with banks creating their derivatives on the XRP ledger. For instance, Bank of America could issue BOA coin on the XRPL, using XRP as a reserve asset to back it up. Internal transactions among banks and institutional-grade liquidity providers would rely on XRP to facilitate the exchanges between these private coins. According to him, this case of private mass adoption would catalyze the $20,000 gold. In this scenario, XRP's value would be tied to its pivotal role in enabling cross-border transfers for major financial institutions, making it an indispensable and highly sought-after asset. Major financial players, including large banking corporations, could leverage the asset. It is crucial to emphasize that these are speculative ideas and not guaranteed outcomes. At its current price of 71 cents, XRP would need to skyrocket by an astronomical 2,790,000% to hit $20,000. This would mark an unprecedented appreciation rate. However, Stingrabber's insights are an intriguing exploration of how certain factors and mechanisms within the XRP ecosystem could influence its price trajectory. So we come to the end of this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.